Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the webinar, the last one before the summer. Um, unfortunately, this is a pre-recorded webinar, so we will not be doing this live. Normally, we enjoy doing live webinars, but in this case, it is pre-recorded and will be also available for view on demand on our website. So here today, we're talking about AI-based customer insights with CRM analytics and revenue intelligence. Hmm. Sounds like a very long sentence, but basically we're going to talk a bit about the value of AI. And I just uh, was attending a, a conference last week and one of the people said, everyone, every time somebody says at a conference the word AI, we should drink a shot. And I think that is true. But there is value of AI based on the customer insights, especially in the Salesforce CRM platform when combined with CRM A and revenue intelligence, which we're here to talk about. So my name is Geoffrey Smolders. I am the founder of Bistery and uh, I'm going to take you on a small tour on what I think is very valuable in, in Salesforce's uh, ecosystem on, on this topic. So a bit about Bistery, in short, Bistery is a full stack modern data consultancy. So we have a few technology partners we focus on. Of course, our major and most important partners are Salesforce and Tableau. And we also verge around to the other partners on the screen. We are about 100 people across four locations, uh, Belgium, United Kingdom, Netherlands, and Germany, uh, launched since 2015. Uh, a small glance of some key customers. Uh, we have about 800 customers in the ecosystem today. And we are also a Salesforce Ventures backed company, which mainly means that Salesforce also believes in us as a good consultancy. <coughs> And we're also partnering with this session with Spire. So Spire is our satellite company above Bistery. So Spire is a, a collection of companies just like Bistery. You see them below, Brightfox, Customer Link, Dots and Arrows, Ford, GoSonic, and Harvick. They, they have a whole range of expertise from going to the, the sales CRM, to the traditional CRM, to the commerce cloud, marketing cloud, MuleSoft integrations and so on and so on is what we really specialize in and we are 450 salesforce experts with 1200 certificates uh, on salesforce and makes us the biggest team in europe to help you deploy salesforce multi-cloud on a large scale so let's talk about this revenue intelligence because that that's a bit of a, a newer term we've heard we've heard about CRM analytics we've heard about tableau but what does revenue intelligence actually mean so if we look at a, a simple picture um, uh, what is CRM analytics revenue intelligence is built on CRM analytics so you have to see revenue intelligence as a, a big uh, collection of templates and pre-built reports that will work on CRM analytics so CRM analytics is the deep integration of analytics within Salesforce uh, if you compare that to Tableau I would say CRM analytics is much uh, more integrated on the level of quick metric insight fast numbers as you can see here on the right side where tableau is very much uh, deeply integrated on the dashboarding level also pulling in multiple sources and they combine together very well into the salesforce ecosystem so with crma we already made yeah, uh, sales reps and, and service reps much more productive we have Einstein AI coming, which we're going to talk about. We can improve voice and video conversation in real time. Basically, we can enable customers uh, and, and service workers faster than ever with CRMA. So how does that look for um, a template in uh, revenue intelligence? Well, this is a revenue intelligence example running in Salesforce. So this is a, a really nice overview of a forecast, an opportunity review in this case of the, the person, Wanda Wilson, and you can see uh, kind of a, a traditional view, dashboard style, table style overview of all the opportunities running into the system, what's closed, what's the coverage, what's the open pipeline, some forecasting numbers in the best. And there's also, you know, what's the quota that that person needs to run and what's the gap to the quota we're having today and some kind of quick insights, CRMA insights available here. And you look below is the more traditional view of your Salesforce, we can jump immediately to those opportunities that are linked to it. So what does revenue intelligence do? Well, revenue intelligence actually brings insights as a first step. So dashboards for forecast, trends, sales, and team performance, ready to build. No need to reinvent the wheel. Salesforce has taken all the best practices from all the customers and actually built pre-built templates that really give you the insight to do that kind of sales where the revenue really comes from and to have that forecast the trending and all that stuff available into the system 
Now, that being said, there's also a possibility to do some pipeline inspection. So the consolidated pipeline view, which I just showed with key metrics and deals, and of course the AE insights uh, running above that. Now the forecasting and forecast intelligence is, is based on, on, on the historical and uh, some models running on the future. But we also have really deeper level uh, relationship intelligence, deal relationship intelligence, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. The really customer 360 insights is really combining the power of the sales and service cloud for a 360 view of the customer that really uh, customer journey uh, is being enabled uh, very, very heavily. So we can have the full picture, not only from the sales, but also what's happening on support side with those customers and how are they working together. And of course, Einstein discovery, the AI insights pension. So that's basically the top on the, below that runs analytics, AI and machine learning, um, and then data management and transformation layers to just have that data in the right shape available. Now, this is an example of a pipeline overview in a very nice overview chart, how the, the, the different stages flow in uh, from left to right. These are standard dashboards that are available where you can really see immediately what's my gap in this quarter uh, to get to the forecast and how, uh, how likely am I going to close deals and where are we moving from. So those kind of things are ready to use out of the box in your pipeline, which make it much more interesting for sales leaders and sales reps to look into insights fast. So by the way, what do actual users report back on revenue intelligence? So the focus for the whole revenue intelligence platform is really time to value. That's what we want to achieve. We want to achieve very, very fast time to value. So if you look back at, uh, yeah, just real actual user experience is that we see that 33% is more confident that the data and insights in CRM are more accurate. 32% is more likely than those non-revenue intelligence firms that the system provide the latest information. And 37% of the users are more confident their systems let them identify customer problems and issues before they even rise. And actually they can take action before they even, even get to there. And 26% is more confident that their systems are supplying predictive recommendations for addressing those customer problems. So basically, if you look at revenue intelligence as a recap, it's intelligence and collaboration, because all the sales can see different styles and can different identity, which lead to actionable items. You can kick off the sales workflows, but it's all based around what is our favorite topic at Bistory, and that is, of course, the data behind that, data needing to run and have all those insights available. So what's this AI hype? We see it a lot. We see ChatGPT popping up all the time. The AI hype today is, is very real. I think AI has become a commodity. And you have to imagine that for people today, uh, AI is not anymore some computer language. We don't need to write complex code. But basically, we are now able to talk into natural text to our computer, and it will will reply back with natural text and will find insights faster than we can and also check and spot patterns. AI is not per se intelligent. AI is just very good at figuring out fast patterns and explaining it in a simple text. So our interface to talk to a computer has just improved drastically. But AI is much more than the generative AI or chat thing we hear about. So let's not get distracted by generative AI only. Generative AI is what we see today mostly in use. We can talk to a computer, it will talk back. We can ask a question, it will sort things. We can ask to write a piece of code, it will write a piece of code. We can ask it to research the best products on the internet and it will do that. But that's very much an ask and it will reply with a text gen generative uh, AI question. So it can also generate images, sounds, visuals, that's not a problem, but it's mostly that kind of stuff. But AI is much, much more. AI can also predict and spot patterns on a very deep level. So basically, the, the, the big thing what we see here is that AI does not run without data. Everything around us is based on data. Everything you do, everything you transact, every application is built on data that has not been changing for many, many years, but now that data is becoming more and more important as before, because AI only gets smarter, quote unquote, if it gets fed data. If it doesn't have the data across the whole organization, then the AI model will remain a bit stupid. 
what do we mean with that? So basically, we need to, the challenge that we face as companies today is that we often lock up valuable data into solid structures that do not connect. Look at your own company, look at your own organization today. There's probably silos of data which are isolated and do not talk to each other. And what we want to do is open up all the data so we can find more value, more patterns, more insights. So those AI models can learn, those large language models can learn much more about the insights that are available in your data. So silo data eh, basically is lonely data that immediately loses value. And if you lock up data into a certain spot, let's say you lock up the service data and the sales data into separate spots, and they do not talk to each other, then we cannot find the patterns and insights we want to find in those things. Uh, a more simple example is if we are working an opportunity as a sales rep and we are doing to the stages. But basically, we, we, we move forward, we have the phone calls locked and everything, but if we do not trace and track the emails or the emails that are coming in from the customer, and we don't scan that data, then we lose some data and leave some data behind. So every interaction, every customer step, every 360 step of that pattern of the Salesforce customer, needs to be tracked and connecting that data together is where we really unlock the insights and is the opportunity that we all have to work on. So AI can provide true value if you unlock it cross data over the whole platform, effectively providing real learning models. And that is what Salesforce is doing fantastic. If you have a multi-cloud deployment, if you have sales cloud, service cloud, commerce cloud, marketing cloud, you name it, all connected together in a 360 and you can ha have the data connected below that because that's what Salesforce does, then the AI models on top of that can really provide the value that you need. So if you look back at, of course, the customer 360, uh, uh, we already know uh, this, most of this, these are all the, the different options we have available. It's the Tableau models, it's the MuleSoft integration, it's Slack, it's commerce, it's marketing cloud. And then in that sense, under that, the deepest layer is Hyperforce. Hyperforce is the raw data of all that connecting together. Then there's a transactional database. Uh, and then there's Einstein AI and there's the flow automation. So what's important in these things is that when we enable that with data cloud and connect all those multi-clouds together, we really have a real-time data platform that can constantly work and find patterns in that data. We can segment and we still have that transactional database and AI will run on top of that and find insights. And then the real power comes can with the flow automation because you can trigger certain events, can trigger certain flows, and can certain things can be automated to provide that customer the real, true self-360 uh, experience and really connect to the brand because we always talk about customer stickiness. That's the most important thing we need to do. So <clears throat> what do we need to do in that modern data stack, that modern story we need to tell? We have to put data at the center of every customer interaction. Now, how does that work? What does that do for you? So basically we can provide insights on the go. On the left side, you have a, an account health score. There's leading causes why an account gets a certain score. Um, there's an upsell score. For example, if we see certain behaviors, patterns, some customers look at a new product in your stack uh, using uh, some webinars or some emails that have been opened or marketing emails, or they're, they're trying to reach out or checking web pages. Those can be small indicators that we knew before we had that data, but now AI can on the spot give you that insight and give you uh, some more upsell potentials. Also on the sell rate, uh, we, based on historical data and patterns, we can start predicting what the win rate is. We can start predicting what's good, what's bad. And we can give feedback back to the AI because saying, okay, this is not correct. This is bad information. We can constantly train the model ourselves by giving feedback to the, to the Einstein AI system. Now, what we want to do is provide insights, as I said, at every stage of the customer journey. So a, a good example here is, is lead scoring. So we can build a complex lead scoring system using AI. And we can look at our opportunities here on the left side, and then it will be ranked by lead score. Uh, and then Einstein will give you some reasons why this is scoring, because in this case, the title of the job a person is purchasing. Okay, a purchasing person, that's the person who decides with the money, so the score goes up. This company is Zoom Beverages. I imagine that's an interesting company for us. 
and their Pardot last activity for marketing is pretty recent. So, and then there's a negatives also. So we, we only did a, a cold call with them. So we cannot say there's a real opportunity that, but it's a really good score available. And then Einstein immediately offers you action on the go. You want to send them an email or you want to have give, give them a call. So that's, that's the wonderful thing of, of, you have to see this AI system for your um, service agents or sales reps as a kind of a support, uh, a co-pilot as you call it, to help you out in that journey. So we, we provide those insights uh, constantly on the go. So this is a nice insight on the performance of your, of your pipeline, basically saying, okay, in this case, look, we're a million short. Uh, to get to that closed quote gap. And on the right side, you'll see insights immediately from, um, from, from Einstein coming in. Uh, recent activity, the deal status review, the company is expanding, getting some inline information in, opportunity is slowing down versus other opportunities, their prospect has not responded, we have not communicated to the prospect. So all those things that you as a sales rep know, AI is just assisting you giving more insights. So AI is not here to replace our jobs, to replace massive automation, but is really to provide you with those insights on the go as you can really take action immediately uh, as you go. So <clears throat> being on top of that customer journey, that's the message I'm trying to get across, is actually a very hard task to do manually. Uh, um, if you have to keep notes constantly, you have to keep tasks, you have to have a callback, you're in a call, a customer calls, you have to decline, okay, you have to make a note. And then Salesforce will guide you, of course, with your CRM system and with AI to really keep you on top of the opportunities and get that customer journey right. So we provide insights, again, at every stage of the customer journey. I'll really keep repeating this. And this is a beautiful email integration example where actually the, the text of the email, of course, the email is being locked into the CRM system, which is convenient. We've been doing that for a few years now. But... AI models now also provide fast insights. As you can see, there's a scheduling request. So uh, somebody wants to discuss the proposal. So um, in this case, Einstein detects, okay, mm, we, we think this customer wants to schedule uh, immediately some, uh, some, some proposal. And then uh, we're investigating other options. Uh, so, okay, we assume competition is being mentioned. So we have to track that this is now a competitive opportunity versus other stages. That kind of fast insight showing it in your face, showing it and leveraging it up will really help you accelerate and keep you on top of these opportunities. And so the power of Salesforce automation then helps you redirect all the best to the right persons. So when we start automating all those things, basically we can also see that we have in the lead scoring fact, okay, this is a medium scoring lead. Okay, is that true? Uh, let's say the medium scoring leads is defined together with, uh, with the organization, uh, let's assign this to the BR, BDR team and then stop. We also might add other actions like send an email, do a phone call, uh, create a marketing action, put them into a segmented loop. In this case, high scoring leads move to the account execs. Also that power of the flow automation, which I showed you on top, will help you really guide those users to the right direction. So, and these things are, are really taken from live demos showing the power of managing a pipeline. So. This is an example of a, of a Salesforce screen with a, a pipeline opportunity overview. And again, this is a very traditional, typical overview of your pipeline, but those predictions of Einstein and the AI model on top of that really comes in. It predicts, okay, this is the revenue I see coming in. This is my closed one. This is my total prediction and we have to go scoring. And there's some top factors that it gets from that data across, uh, across the deal. So, Hey, we've won more deals than the same day on the last quarter, so we've been performing better. Uh, two, two more team members than the same day last quarter, but has a lower amount in pipeline than the same day. So quick insight, quick predictions, quick on the spot goes is really helping you move that, move that forward. Now, I said the world is not only generative AI, and we should talk about the other predictions and other models, but we'll, let's do talk about generative AI because it's it's even it's even useful in that case also. So if we introduce Einstein GPT, which is of course a really beautiful addition to the to the chat GPT world into Salesforce, it's not only looking at your emails, interpreting your emails, looking at your pipeline, you can make a prediction, look at your behavior of your customers and giving insights on the go. It's also going to help you on the fly 
answer things. This in this example, you can see a chat happening between a service uh, employee and a customer chatting live on a website. And on the right side, Einstein will already give you replies that are useful that things that the customer is asking for. Basing on the text analysis, it says, I think you should answer this, or I think you should answer this. We're also going to be able to write full emails to customers or prospects answering topics. We're also going to be able to ask more complex questions. Like for example, hey, if a, a prospect comes in with a competitive product and we don't know enough about this competitive product, we can go ask uh, Einstein GPT, can you give me some more information about these products and what are the negative factors and what are our strengths to really compete with that product? So really, again, that co-pilot, that suggestions, and it's not intelligent, it just finds patterns in data and knows a basis of information that is basically the world while internet and has a lot of data to look at and your own customer data and your history in the enterprise, combining that power to really give you suggestions and become and enable your, your users, whether it's sales or service to become more powerful. Of course, Tableau is also introducing GPT. The future of Tableau is really going to look at faster metrics and as you can see on the top in this says hey, we say okay appliance says is seeing an unusual spike when branch revenue and campaign are, are steadily increasing of the 12 metrics you're following two are unusual so that's your home screen that's how you open uh, your tableau pulse or salesforce in the future and you'll get some insights on the go and already giving you some some details in a very textual recap and if you look at the metrics it will show you, of course, a standard metric, a spark line, which gives you indicators of negative and, and positive growth, but also explaining that again into more a textual fact uh, and saying, okay, for example, the monthly campaign ROI has been increasing at a rate of one percentage per month for the last six months. Uh, <clears throat> if she's in line with the change of rates increase in social media campaigns. So it's actually measuring kind of the results already in applying, giving you a textual answer. Now, Talbot GPT does much more, it integrates them back to Slack. It will give you the insights really back to your collaboration system and, and bring that insights back. And as you can see, there's buttons here. We can say, okay, what, what are my top contributors? And then again, we get an answer immediately coming from that Salesforce data saying, hey, we looked at the inventory fill rate for this and we saw air fries are up and then there's some statistics and a graph is being generated on the fly showing that data proving that text with some visual uh, insights to really help you move forward <clears throat> so how do i how do you get started with all of this how does this is this not too overwhelming do i have to now first build a complex CRM? no this we can build this on top of your crm system if you have sales teams working in salesforce and you're going to integrate with revenue intelligence then we get Einstein, we get Tableau, we get all the best of what analytics can do in Salesforce right out of the box. So what we're going to do is just helping people seeing and understanding the data even better than before. So we're going to do a quick start, as we say. What we're going to do is we look at AI as a simple workshop to assess your current situation. We're going to map your custom solutions and we're going to map at your look at your pipeline expectations, your targets, your quotas, and we'll provide immediate value to the business. We'll already find data into that insight. We'll build confidence with those proposed solutions, and then we can start building, really applying and training those models better. We're gonna build out your processes and workflows. We're gonna ensure there's maybe some external data sources like maybe turnover data or ticketing data that's not in Salesforce, pulling that back into Salesforce and connecting that both to Cinematics and Tableau so we can run those Einstein models on top of that and then basically we built a blueprint for the future based on your company and uh, it's really a quick start in a couple of days and then training further and then redeploying that and you don't have to spend time on building complex reports or custom reports that's out of the box you really have to spend time on how do we map your process your sales business process your expectations your quotas your values your service tickets to that model of AI and really sustain that blueprint and we deploy with confidence using revenue intelligence and Einstein AI. So if there's any questions, and fortunately this is not a live webinar, it's pretty recorded, please send a message to joffrey.smallers at bisturio.com or sales at bisturio.com or leave some comments uh, in the chat and uh, we will pick it up as we record this session, of course, and get back to you. 
I want to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to working with some of you really on the, on the future of revenue intelligence and AI. Thank you very much.